sound familiar? It was the jangling of a key ring that actually created the clinking and clanging of the Roman legions in the 1960 film Spartacus. Credit the very first Foley artist, founder of a craft that flourishes to this day. With Martha Teichner, let's listen in. Yeah, these will be good. If you worry about what other people think. See, now here I'm feeling the packages again. <laughs> or embarrass easily. Smooth and creamy. Well, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm going to take them both. Because... Don't go to the supermarket with Marco Costanzo. So do you go around feeling stuff everywhere uh, you go? I, I, you're, I, I, you're I do the, feel my food, yes. You're pawing the, the celery. Absolutely. It's nice celery. Yeah. No, he's not a chef. So what's the celery for? This is for the Big Lebowski. That's a good crack. The kind he created for Lebowski's back. In the Coen Brothers cult classic. And listen to the swish of all those leaves when Meryl Streep makes her entrance as the witch in the Oscar-nominated musical Into the Woods. Into the raw giant's mother's skull, where you can blame another witch. Yup, Marco Costanzo. Now, I just save them in the, uh, in fall. We have about seven or eight bags upstairs. Costanzo is what's called a Foley artist, someone who reproduces the sounds for movies and television that the microphones barely pick up when they're recording dialogue. We're made for making you rich. Pretty much every sound you hear is enhanced by Foley or some kind of sound effect. Who was Foley? Jack Foley. He was the first one to create this process of putting sound effects in sync to actions that you see on screen. In 1929, Jack Donovan Foley improvised when Universal Pictures was frantically and secretly trying to turn a silent version of the musical Showboat into what would seem like one of those new talkies. With you by my side, darling, I know I shall conquer the world. For nearly 40 years, Foley perfected tricks of the trade, not so different from the ones used by Marco Costanzo. This is the snow pit. We use kosher salt because it's a little thicker, heavier grade of salt. Then I cover the whole thing with cornstarch. The cornstarch gives you that creaky sound, and with the salt underneath it, it just gives you a little bit of a thud sound. I do each individual footstep. I use my hands, and if you were to use your feet, you're just not going to get the detail. So the shooting scene in Foxcatcher was punctuated and made much more chilling by Costanzo's gloved hands in the snow pit. The key to making the action work, any action in Foley art, is perfect timing. As a child, I was always interested in magic. And I used to, I was known as Marco the Magician through my high school and college years. Being the magician, I had the eye-hand coordination. He was a business major in college, but an interest in film and television led him to an apprenticeship on the movie Sophie's Choice and his calling. Once I saw the Foley stage, I thought, yeah, this is a lot of fun. It was cool. And imagine getting paid to do things like that. You'd never guess, looking at this building in North Bay, New Jersey, the bizarre pack rat's paradise Costanzo presides over inside. So what do you call this place? This is the Foley stage. We've been here for 15, 16 years now. This looks like somebody's garage. <laughs> it's a big junk palace. All these little metal containers, they all make little, nice little... By the end of this year, he figures he'll have created sound effects for nearly 500 movies. Most of them right here. I'm sorry, I have no idea what that thing with the... Oh, Using all this stuff. It has a beautiful sound. Listen to that. And this? Ah, my A-bomb. Once in a while, we need something that's very solid. Feel how heavy that is. It's... I'm not gonna let go on you. It is heavy. Why do you have enough swords to start your own crusade? Well, <laughs> we did work on Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> This is one of those, but it's gone through the mill. Yeah. And, um... Bent. <laughs> Depending on how you hold it, you could... 
It would be a, a zip or a ting. I have no idea what that is. That is a paint can closer. It came from a hardware store that was going out of business. It's controllable. Things that are controllable are like gold to me. Because, you know, if, if something goes for one second or three seconds, if I can control it, I can extend something. I can give it that little personality. Costanzo admits to dumpster diving and cruising what's left on the street on garbage collection days. Why do you need three vacuums? Well, um, none of them work. But he has a good excuse for indulging what some people might consider a pathology. Do you ever throw anything away? Oh, no, I, no I've, uh, I've never th actually, no, I don't ever throw anything away. Come on up here. Yeah, man. This looks like a dangerous <laughs> playground. Ooh. It is. It's, uh, well, watch, don't step on the broken glass. There you go. Uh, uh, well, what, which, why is there broken glass all over this? Um, because we had to do the sound of someone walking in broken glass. So essentially what you do is you use all this stuff right here, mm -hmm. and you have a microphone like this hooked up to... Yep, I, m I move it around. I put it here. You just keep doing it a little bit. At the other end of the microphone cord is sound engineer George Lara recording the noises Costanzo makes. Okay, just play back. Like the skin of an apple as it's being peeled for an upcoming film. Uh, we can't show you. When you're doing this, what are you looking at, the screen or the apple? I'm looking at the screen only. I know just how far to stop and go with it. It's my finger that's actually doing the noise, not the knife. You're barely scratching the skin of the apple. It's where it makes the noise. You would think in the era of digital everything <laughs> in movies, that Foley sound, the art of using a real apple in real time, would be dying. But you would be wrong. Is it a dying art? No, it's, it's thriving. It's bigger than I've ever seen it. I remember when I first started that they spoke about the sound droid, which was a computer that put sound effects in there. What I've read is that it lacked personality. Try to give the innuendo that a human can do. How? It's all in the way he climbs those stairs. <laughs> He's 55, but you can still clearly so see the boy in him. In a... Ooh, Oops. <laughs> Look at this old judge. He's a consummate professional who still ponders whether he prefers honks or squeaks. I'm going to say I, I'm a big squeak fan. That said, he produces what he calls his magic table. <laughs> See, so we use this for uh, the carriages. Tree falling. <laughs> it has made it in so many films, I, it's hard to even imagine. This rickety table is a big treasure. Yeah, this is, this is, yeah, yeah. See, and I have everyone signed. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Steve Buscemi, Meryl Streep. Wow. And then right next door, the squeaky chair. Foley artists weren't even given on-screen credit until the 1980s. And there's no Oscar category for what Marco Costanzo does. Imagine you're walking down a hall and you're trying to just hide. So his satisfaction is the fun of it. <laughs>